Today we're going to talk about La Nina and El Nino. And these are weather phenomena that typically occur over the tropical Pacific Ocean. They're extremely important weather phenomena because they impact the entire world in terms of agriculture, economic output, and even conflicts between nations. They are extremely variable weather patterns uh, occurring every two to seven years. They can be very mild to very intense. They can last for weeks or they can even last for years. Weather scientists are still trying to figure out how to predict La Nina and El Nino and why they actually occur. But before we start talking about those two, let's go ahead and talk about normal conditions and draw them on the board. And then we're going to compare La Nina and El Nino to those normal conditions. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and draw North and South America. This is going to be North America. This is going to be South America. And this is going to be the Southwest. Okay, New Mexico, Southern California, in and around there. Now over on the West side, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to draw Asia. China is going to be way up here. And Indonesia is going to be down here. Now let's go ahead and stick in the equator because this happens in the tropical Pacific Ocean. And there's our equator. Let's go ahead and label that. Now, I like to think of this as starting, this typical, let's go ahead and, and draw a low pressure over here. In the summer, that's typically in Indonesia has a monsoon season in the summer. So that's where I like to begin the normal conditions because I don't have all this memorized. What I do is I start with something that I'm familiar with and I simply build outward from there. So let's go ahead. I know that Indonesia and the surrounding areas have monsoon season in the summer. Now what that means is I'm going to have a big low pressure sitting right over the equator there. And that low pressure means that I've got lots of evaporation taking place here. So I've got lots of warm, moist air going up in the air. When that happens, I get something called adiabatic cooling. So adiabatic cooling. Now what that means is, as this hot, moist air moves upward, it begins to cool. And as that air mass begins to cool, it can't hold as much moisture anymore. So that triggers a lot of rain. So this is going to be very wet. Very wet. We're going to have lots of thunder clouds around here uh, because of that. Also, you're going to have very warm water here. Now, I've got a low pressure here. And I know winds blow from high pressure to low pressure. So I know winds have to be blowing into this low pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and diagram that next. Here's my winds coming across into this low pressure. And winds like to blow from high pressure to low pressure. So that's what I've got over here. I've got a high pressure area. Now you can see where this is going. I've got winds blowing this way. I've got air moving up in the air. We're going to set up a convective circulation pattern right here. So let's go ahead and finish drawing that. So the winds are going to blow over this way, and then they're going to blow down this way. Now, as this air mass is rising, it's going to rain, 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 and by the time this air mass gets to as high as it's going to go, a lot of the water is going to be lost. And by the time that water is all lost and this air mass, kind of, these winds sort of blow over here and start descending, we're going to have very warm, dry air. And that's exactly what's going to happen over here. We're going to have warm, dry air. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Warm, dry air. Now, as the air descends, this is going to be referred to as adiabatic heating. Be 
because as this air mass descends, the rest of the atmosphere is going to squeeze it, do work on it, warm it up, and it's already very dry because it lost water. What does that mean? Well, that means the Southwest and South America are going to have very warm, dry conditions when we have normal conditions. Let me go ahead and write that up here, normal conditions. Now, in addition to that, we're going to have some coastal winds blowing up here. These are going to be coastal winds. And these coastal winds are literally going to blow a layer of water from here up to here, and eventually that water is going to work its way westward. And that has a lot of significance because as we blow this top layer of water from here over to here, cold water is going to come up from the bottom of the ocean and replace that layer of warm water that was blown over here. Now this has a lot of significance because when that cold water comes up from the bottom of the ocean, it's going to bring a lot of nutrients up with it due to erosion from the bottom of the ocean. And all those nutrients and cold water are going to come upward towards the surface. And where you have a lot of nutrients, those nutrients are going to feed plankton. And plankton are the basis for the food chain. So when you've got a lot of plankton around here because you've got a lot of food, and I like to think, you know, if you feed them, their population will increase, you're going to have a huge amount of plankton here. And when you've got a huge amount of plankton, fish are going to take notice of this and fish are going to move into that area. So this area is going to have a very good fishery. So let's go ahead and write that down. So you're going to have what we call upwelling. Upwelling because that cold nutrient dense water is going to upwell. It's going to move upward to replace that layer of water that was lost due to the winds blowing. So cold and nutrient dense. nutrient dense water and that is going to lead to plankton and when you have lots of plankton you're going to have a great fishery now this is good on two levels one this is going to uh, produce a lot of economic output for South America secondly this fishery which is very rich is going to uh, going to provide a great source of fish and protein for the rest of the world. So this is a very good thing happening here. Now, these are our normal conditions. Let's go ahead and talk about La Nina at this point. And La Nina, which means the girl, is going to, I like to think of it as more extreme normal conditions. So let's go ahead and write that down. That was normal conditions, which you're looking at right now. Let's go ahead and change this to La Nina now. And La Nina means the girl. And what it really does is more extreme normal. That's how I like to think of it. It's more extreme normal. So take a look at this and think of everything here is exaggerated. What's going to happen is Indonesia is going to be wetter. Southwest United States and South America are going to be warmer and drier, even drought conditions. This upwelling is going to intensify and we're going to have even more cold water. This cold water here is going to expand outward in this whole region. We're going to have lots of cold surface water right here. The trade winds, and that's what you got through here, you've got trade winds blowing in this direction. Those trade winds are going to strengthen and become even more intense. So everything here is simply going to be the same, but it's going to be more intense. It's going to be more extreme normal. Now, let's go ahead and compare that with El Nino. I'm going to go ahead and erase this up here, and I'm going to write El Nino. Now, El Nino means the boy, or the Christ child. 
And the reason they named it the Christ Child is because El Nino typically begins around Christmas time for some reason. So they began to call it the Christ Child or El Nino. Now with El Nino, we're going to have opposite conditions. So take a look at this, and everything is going to be exactly the opposite with El Nino. And the more severe the El Nino season, the more opposite this is going to be. So let's go ahead and change our diagram to reflect those opposite conditions. Right? So you see a low pressure here. This low pressure is going to change to a high pressure. This high pressure is going to change to a low pressure. And our wind patterns are going to slow down and reverse. So everything is going to go the opposite direction. And we're going to change our adiabatic heating and adiabatic cooling. That's all going to change. So over here I got descending air, so that's going to be adiabatic heating. And over here I've got ascending air, that's going to be adiabatic cooling. And because of that, I have to try, uh, change my conditions here, my weather conditions. All right. And now we're going to put some clouds over here. And this is going to become very rainy and wet. So the southwest is going to have a wet time. South America also typically very dry, it's now going to become very wet. And over here, which is normally very wet, is going to become very dry. Warm and dry. And Indonesia, which is used to getting monsoons, is now going to have possibly drought-like conditions. Now this is also going to change down here, because these coastal winds are going to weaken and disappear. And that same thing goes for the trade winds. They're going to weaken and they're actually going to change direction. Instead of blowing towards the west, they're actually going to change and blow towards the east. So there goes all our nice upwelling. And this warm water is actually going to expand this way. It's going to expand eastward. And we're going to end up with warm water all the way over here and no upwelling. Now that's important because if there's no upwelling, there's no nutrients flowing upward, no nutrients, no plankton, no plankton, and suddenly our fishery collapses. If our fishery collapses, suddenly South America, there goes a lot of their economic output, there goes a lot of local food production for people, and there goes uh, a worldwide uh, source of fish. So the, the amount of fish supplied to the rest of the world is also going to decrease. Now because all the normal conditions are now opposite, every place that we have agriculture, good agriculture output, is typically going to change too. So we could have much drier or much wetter conditions depending on the place in the world. Because El Nino and La Nina, not only do they happen in the tropical Pacific region, they also happen all around the world. It's just most intense right here. This is where the phenomena actually begins. But it has ripple effects across the entire world. In Africa, in the northern United States, China, everywhere is affected. Australia, the entire world is affected and their weather changes. So normal conditions for farming often change to poor conditions for farming. And the worldwide food supply drops. So this phenomena is extremely important uh, to the entire world. And that's going to be it for El Nino and La Nina.